welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 9, Part 4, Procedures. As usual, we're going to start out with the diagnostic procedures. And our first term is always tricky for students, and myself at times, because of its spelling. And that term is urinalysis. U-R-I-N-A-L-Y-S-I-S. Most of us are familiar with this term. It's the examination of the urine for abnormal elements. What makes this term tricky is most of us tend to say the word as urine analysis. And in fact, that's the derivation of the word. It's urine plus analysis. But that's not the way it spells, so we need to be very careful of that. With the word part urino, we drop the slash o, and in the word analysis, we drop the n and the a. So the spelling is u r i n urine, and then alysis, a l y s i s. So you need to resist the temptation to put that n a in there. An analysis. It's not part of the, the spelling of the word. So you want to be careful of that. The next term is also tricky again because of its spelling, and that is catheterization. C A T H E T E R I Z A T I O N. And if we break this word down into parts, we have catheter, C A T H E T E R. We have eyes, I-Z-E, we have eight, A-T-E, and ion, I-O-N. And these word parts are regular English word parts. They're not medical word parts per se. And when we're spelling with these word parts, what we want to do is be sure that we drop the E in eyes and the E in eight and that our ending is I-O-N. So the correct spelling again is catheter, C-A-T-H-E-T-E-R, I's, I-Z, eight, A-T, E-N, I-O-N. So again, practice spelling that to yourself over and over until you get it 100%, so you won't miss it on a test. Now what is catheterization? Or catheterization? A little tricky to say it as well. Well, a catheter is a tube, and catheterization in this context is a tube that is inserted into the bladder, and it's done for three different reasons to obtain a specimen, to drain urine from the bladder, or to instill a medication. And we're going to see examples of that in the diagnostic terms that follow, as well as the treatment terms. Okay, so now the first diagnostic term I have for you is cystography. C-Y-S-T-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. We have the word parts cysto and graphy. Based on its word parts, what would this term mean? Well, this would be a radiographic study of the bladder. And in this case, this study is done with a contrast medium that is instilled into the bladder. And that would be instilled through the process of catheterization. So we would place a contrast medium into the bladder with the catheter, and then we would take x-ray pictures of it. The next term builds on that process and that is a voiding cystourethrography. A voiding cystourethrography has the word parts cysto, C-Y-S-T-O, urethro, U-R-E-T-H-R slash O, and graphy, hyphen G-R-A-P-H-Y. The term voiding refers to urination. A cystourethrography would be an examination using x-rays of the urethra and bladder. Now, the 
added component of this is it's done while the patient is urinating. So rather than a static x-ray picture, they're actually going to get a, a live visualization. And to do this, they use a fluoroscope. So in avoiding cystourethrography, a fluoroscope is used to examine the flow of urine from the bladder and through the urethra. This is often done after a cystography because in a cystography they would place the contrast medium into the bladder, get the x-rays, and then they would use the fluoroscope and watch as the patient voided. Okay, the next one is retrograde urography. R-E-T-R-O-G-R-A-D-E -E, Urography, U-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y And retrograde refers to going backwards. So that's an important component of the meaning of this term. Retrograde is going back, backwards. A urography would be some kind of radiographic stu study of the urinary system. And that is, in fact, what we have here. It's a radiographic study of the urinary system after contrast has been placed in the urethra and caused to flow upward or backwards through the urinary tract. And that's the retrograde part. They're watching the urine flow or actually not urine, it's contrast medium, flowing backwards through the system, and they're getting pictures of that. Okay, the next two diagnostic procedures are often confused, so we need to keep these two straight. The first one is an intravenous pyelogram. Intravenous, I-N-T-R-A-V-E-N-O-U-S, pyelogram, P-Y-E-L-O-G-R-A-M. And this is a radiographic study of the kidneys and the ureters using a contrast medium. Pyelogram, remember the renal pelvis is part of the kidney. Gram would be to make a record. And intravenous refers to through the veins, and that's how they give the contrast medium. If it's intravenous, what they're doing is they're giving the contrast medium in a vein rather than through a catheter. So remember, if it's an intravenous pylogram, intravenous, there's a contrast medium. And again, we're studying the kidneys and the ureters. Now, the next term is also a study of the kidneys and ureters, but we are not using a contrast medium. That's the key difference. And this term is kidneys, ureters, and bladder. And it's that simple. Kidneys, K-I-D-N-E-Y-S, ureters, U-R-E-T-E-R-S, and bladder, B-L-A-D-D-E-R. And this is a radiographic study of the kidneys, ureters, and bladder without using the contrast medium. Okay, easiest way to keep these straight is the intravenous pil pilogram has that word intravenous in it, which means how they're putting the contrast in. So intravenous is a contrast medium. The term without intravenous does not use the contrast medium. Okay, and the next two are diagnostic procedures of the prostate. The first one is digital rectal exam. D-I-G-I-T-A-L, rectal, R-E-C-T-A-L, and exam, E-X-A-M. And this is where the clinician inserts a finger into the rectum to examine the prostate by touch. And this is a screening for prostate cancer and also for an enlarged prostate. The next term is a blood test for prostate cancer. And this is the prostate-specific antigen test. P-R-O-S-T-A-T-E, prostate specific, S-P-E-C-I-F-I-C, -I -I and antigen, A-N-T-I-G-E-N. -E and the prostate-specific antigen test is a blood test for an antigen that indicates the presence of prostate cancer. Okay, well that covers the diagnostic procedures that again tend to be tricky, easy to confuse, and are often missed on tests. And so now let's go ahead and do some practice. Number one, what is the term for the radiographic examination of the bladder?
That one's not too bad. It's cystography. C-Y-S-T-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. The next one's a little trickier. What is the term for the radiographic study of the kidneys and ureters using a contrast medium? Okay, and remember the contrast medium is given intravenously. This is the intravenous pyelogram. I-N-T-R-A-V-E-N-O-U-S pyelogram, P-Y-E-L-O-G-R-A-M. And what is the term for the examination of the prostate using a finger? That's the digital rectal exam. D I G I T A L rectal R E C T A L exam E X A M. And what is the term for the examination of the urine to detect abnormalities? Okay, and we have to be careful of the spelling here. It's urinalysis, spelled U-R-I-N-A-L-Y-S-I-S, -I -I urinalysis. What is the term for the radiographic study of the urinary system after a contrast has been inserted into the urethra and forced to flow upward or backwards? Okay, backwards, retrograde, we're studying the urinary system in general. That's urography. So this is a retrograde urography. R-E-T-R-O-G-R-A-D-E, -E, urography, U-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. Okay, and what is the term for the insertion of a tube into the bladder for diagnostic or treatment purposes. Okay, tricky to say and spell. That's catheterization. C-A-T-H-E-T-E-R-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N. Catheterization. And what is the term for a radiographic study of the kidneys and ureters without using a contrast medium? Well, this procedure also includes the bladder. It's the kidneys, ureters, bladder. K-I-D-N-E-Y-S, ureters, U-R-E-T-E-R-S and bladder, B-L-A-D-D-E-R. Again, that does not use the contrast medium. What is the term for the visualization of the flow of urine from the bladder and through the urethra? That is the voiding cystourethrography. Voiding, V-O-I-D-I-N-G, cystourethrography, C-Y-S-T-O-U-R-E-T-H-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. And finally, what is the term for the blood test used to detect prostate cancer? Okay, that's the prostate specific antigen test. P R O S T A T E specific S P E C I F I C and antigen A N T I G E N. Okay, and in part two, let's go ahead and talk about the treatment procedures. The first one is dialysis. 
D-I-A-L-Y-S-I-S. Most people have probably heard of this. In the broad sense of the term, dialysis is a procedure to remove waste products from the blood. And this is done when a patient's kidneys are no longer able to function. Part of the dialysis procedure is the use of a fluid that contains water and electrolytes that is actually the cleansing agent. It's used to clean the blood. And this fluid is called dialysate. D-I-A-L-Y-S-A-T-E. And there are actually two types of dialysis. The first one is the one that we normally think of when we think of dialysis. And its formal name is hemodialysis. H-E-M-O-D-I-A-L-Y-S-I-S. And in the hemodialysis, this is where the waste products are filtered directly from the blood outside the patient's body in a dialysis machine, otherwise known as an artificial kidney. So blood is actually run out of the patient in through the machine. It's, cl it's cleansed by the dialysate, and then it's pumped back into the patient. And that's what most of us think of when we just use the word dialysis. There is another type of dialysis, however, and that is the peritoneal dialysis, P-E-R-I-T-O-N-E-A-L, dialysis, D-I-A-L-Y-S-I-S. -S. And peritoneal would be pertaining to the peritoneum. And in this type of dialysis, the lining of the peritoneal cavity is used as a filter. So the dialysate is actually pumped into the peritoneum. And then the blood flows through there and is naturally cleaned. And then after a few hours, then the dialysate has to be taken out, drained out, and then new dialysate put in. Peritoneal dialysis. The next series of procedures relate to the kidneys. The first one is nephrostomy. N-E-P-H-R-O-S-T-O-M-Y. And again, this would break down into nephro and ostomy. And this would be a surgical creation of an opening, that's ostomy, between the renal, renal pelvis and the back in order to drain fluid in cases of hydroureter. So this uh, ostomy is used as a drainage. And if you remember going back to chapter 7 on the respiratory system, we had a thoracostomy. And that was to drain fluid from the chest. And in chapter 8, we had a gastrostomy. And that was a tube going into the stomach in order to supply nutrition to a patient. So now we have the nephrostomy, a tube going into the kidney, specifically into the renal pelvis area, so that fluid can be drained out. The next term is nephrolithotomy. N-E-P-H-R-O-L-I-T-H-O-T-O-M-Y. And that breaks down into the word parts nephro, litho, and otomy. And can you take a guess at what this means based on its word parts? Well, an otomy is an incision into... Nephro and lith, nephrolith, would be a kidney stone because nephro refers to kidney and lith refers to stone. So this is an incision not into the stone but into the kidney for the removal of a kidney stone. Nephrolithotomy. Then we have a variation on the nephrolithotomy procedure and this is known as a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Percutaneous, I believe we've seen that word before. It's P-E-R-C-U-T-A-N-E-O-U-S. And that would mean around the skin. Percutaneous nephrolithotomy would be a surgical incision into the back through the skin for the insertion of a nephroscope that is used to crush and remove a kidney stone.
So this is basically a less invasive version of a nephrolithotomy. It's just like if we go back to the previous chapter, we had the cholecystectomy, where they go in and take out the gallbladder and they basically cut you wide open. Then we had the laparoscopic cholecystectomy, where they would make a small incision, insert the laparoscope into the abdomen, and then using that, they could remove the gallbladder. Same deal here. Nephrolithotomy, they're going to cut you wide open and go after that kidney stone and get it out. But a percutaneous nephrolithotomy, it's going to be a small incision in the back. They're going to insert the nephroscope, and they're going to be able to use that to break up, crush the kidney stone, and then remove it through the nephroscope. Okay, and then that leads us to a next term, lithotripsy, L-I-T-H-O-T-R-I-P-S-Y. And this is composed of the word parts, litho, and a new suffix, tripsy, T-R-I-P-S-Y. And tripsy means to crush. Litho would be stone. So lithotripsy is the general term for a procedure to crush a stone. Now, we don't want to confuse that with, say, the percutaneous nephrolithotomy. The defining characteristic of that is that we're making the incision into the back, we're cutting into, that's an otomy, and we are removing the kidney stone. We have to break it up or crush it to get it out, but the defining characteristic is that incision into the kidney to go after the stone. That's as opposed to a lithotripsy, where the defining characteristic is the crushing of the stone. And that leads us to our next term, which is the extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. Extracorporeal, challenging word in its own right, E-X-T-R-A, extra, corporeal, C-O-R-P-O-R-E-A-L. Extracorporeal would mean outside the body. Shockwave refers to ultrasonic sound waves, and lithotripsy, again, means we're crushing a stone. So what this procedure is, and many of us may have heard of this before, is we use shockwaves traveling through water or gel that will then crush the stones inside the body without the need for surgery. Basically, the patient sits inside a big water tank, and there's a ultrasonic generator that generates these pulses that are shock waves. They hit the back, they go through the body, they crush the stones. And the next term is lithotomy. L-I-T-H-O-T-O-M-Y. And this is a little tricky because it sounds like it would just be an incision of a stone, right? We've got litho, L-I-T-H-O, and otomy, O-T-O-M-Y. It seems very broad and bland. Well, this term is actually more specific. It refers to a surgical incision, that's the otomy part, for the removal of a stone from the bladder. Now, we could call this a cystolithotomy. That would make a little more sense because we know that cysto refers to bladder. And in fact, we could call it a cystolithotomy. Surgical incision for the removal of a stone from the bladder. However, just the plain vanilla term lithotomy without any body part assigned to it, that plain term lithotomy actually also means removal of a stone from the bladder. So that's one to watch out for. It's easy to kind of slip up on that because the term is more specific than it actually looks. Okay, and then the next treatment procedures we have relate to the prostate. The first one is prostatectomy, P-R-O-S-T-A-T-E-C-T-O-M-Y. And based on its word parts, you ought to be able to get that one. What is a prostatectomy? Well, broadly, a prostatectomy is surgical removal of the prostate. And it may mean the surgical removal of all of the prostate, or it could refer to part of it. Okay, it's a pretty broad term. And this would be done to treat cancer or to reduce an enlarged prostate. 
Now, there are some specific types of prostatectomy. One type is the radical prostatectomy, radical, R-A-D-I-C-A-L, prostatectomy, P-R-O-S-T-A-T-E-C-T-O-M-Y. And radical means they're going all out and taking everything. A radical prostatectomy, they would take out the whole prostate and the seminal vesicles, which are also male reproductive organs that are attached to the prostate. So they're going to go in and take out everything in a radical prostatectomy. Another procedure is called the transurethral prostatectomy. Transurethral, T-R-A-N-S-U-R-E-T-H-R-A-L. And that would mean what? Pertaining to, across, or through the urethra. And again, prostatectomy, P R O. S-T-A-T-E-C-T-O-M-Y is removal of the prostate. So in a transurethral prostatectomy, we're going through the urethra. And in this case, what we're doing is we're removing an overgrowth of tissue from the prostate through a resectoscope. And that's a variation on a cystoscope. So basically this scope is going in through the urethra into the bladder and then with some cutting tools, some of the tissue that is overgrown and usually making it difficult for the uh, patient to urinate will be removed. Okay, well that covers the trickier treatment procedures. And now, as usual, we're going to go ahead and do some practice. Number one, what is the general term for the procedure to filter the blood of a patient whose kidneys no longer function. That's dialysis, D-I-A-L-Y-S-I-S. -I -I a surgical incision into the back for insertion of a nephroscope that's used to crush and remove kidney stones is known as what? That's a percutaneous nephrolithotomy, P-E-R-C-U-T-A-N-E-O-U-S, nephrolithotomy, N-E-P-H-R-O-L-I-T-H-O-T-O-M-Y. What is the term for the procedure in which a surgical opening is made between the back and the renal pelvis in order to drain fluid in cases of hydroureter? That's a nephrostomy, N-E-P-H-R-O-S-T-O-M-Y. And again, it's important to distinguish between the nephrostomy and the nephrolithotomy. With that ending otomy, we're making an incision. We're going after the nephrolith, which is the kidney stone. In a ostomy, we're making a surgical opening, which is probably going to stick around for a while. And again, as in the thoracostomy and the gastrostomy. We're implanting a tube, and in this case it's for drainage. And what is the term for the procedure that uses ultrasonic shock waves to crush kidney stones? Okay, that's a long one and challenging. It's extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy. E-X-T-R-A-C-O-R-P-O-R-E-A-L, shockwave, S-H-O-C-K-W-A-V-E, and finally lithotripsy, L-I-T-H-O-T-R-I-P-S-Y. What is the term for the procedure in which the patient's peritoneal lining is used to filter the blood? Okay, we're filtering the blood, so that's dialysis. We're using the peritoneum or the peritoneal cavity 
So that's peritoneal dialysis. P-E-R-I-T-O-N-E-A-L dialysis, D-I-A-L-Y-S-I-S. And the procedure for treating BPH, or benign prostatic hypertrophy, that involves removing excess tissue from the prostate using a resectoscope is known as what? That's the transurethral prostatectomy, also abbreviated TURP or TURP. Transurethral, T-R-A-N-S-U-R-E-T-H-R-A-L, prostatectomy, P-R-O-S-T-A-T-E-C-T-O-M-Y. And a surgical incision into a kidney for the removal of kidney stones is known as what? That's the nephrolithotomy, N-E-P-H-R-O-L-I-T-H-O-T-O-M-Y. And what is the term for the procedure in which the blood is filtered outside the body using a dialysis machine? That's pretty straightforward. It's hemodialysis, H-E-M-O-D-I-A-L-Y-S-I-S. What is the general term for the removal of all or part of the prostate? That's a prostatectomy, P-R-O. S-T-A-T-E-C-T-O-M-Y. Suppose we're going to be aggressive and take out the whole prostate, including even the seminal vesicles. What would we call that? That would be the radical prostatectomy. R-A- D-I-C-A-L, prostatectomy, P-R-O-S-T-A-T-E-C-T-O-M-Y. And what is the general term that means to crush stones? Well, that's lithotripsy, L I T H O. T-R-I-P-S-Y. And finally, what is the term for the procedure to surgically remove bladder stones? That is a lithotomy, or again, cystolithotomy. Lithotomy would be L I T H. O-T-O-M-Y, again, we could be more specific, which would be nice, and say cystolithotomy, C-Y-S-T-O-L-I-T-H-O-T-O-M-Y. Again, the important thing is some, if someone uses the term lithotomy, remember we are talking about the bladder and bladder stones. Okay, well that does it for chapter 9 on the urinary system. Again, I wish you good luck on your tests. Happy studying. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.